Hello, everybody. Good evening. My name is Seychelle Van Poole, and I have the distinct pleasure of getting to run this amazing team here with Van Poole Properties Group. And uh, we are so excited to have you guys with us this evening. I promise we have a ton of value-packed information for you in our home buyer workshop. And uh, we're gonna work to um, make this as informative and educational as possible. And we also, if you have any questions, we wanna make it as um, interactive as possible. So please feel free to use the question and answer uh, field on um, your Zoom account if you have any questions. And we'll make sure that we are answering those for you. Um, as we go throughout the evening, so you are able to um, have live Q&A. And um, I also want to remind you, if you have any specific questions regarding you, um, we are available to do on-demand or scheduled appointments, whether it's virtual or in person, to be able to help you through your individual needs as well. So without further ado, thank you for joining us tonight. Your time is super valuable, and we really appreciate you. And let's dive in. So a little bit about us here at uh, Van Poole Properties is um, that we are realtors, we're brokers, and we're also investors. We have been um, purchasing property here in the North Texas area for 55 years. I don't look old enough to be 55 years of investing, so that is accurate. Um, but our team members have, and we've personally been investing here uh, for 15 years in the North Texas area. We are in the top 1% of real estate agents nationwide. We also are in the top 1% of real estate agents here in Texas. Um, we've been voted best realtors by D Magazine since 2006, and we have proudly served over 2,500 families here. And when you think about that, you know, the average real estate agent sells seven homes a year. And uh, so 2,500, we've got, you know, if you put that into dog years, that's, that's a lot of time we've put in here. <laughs> and realtor years to help clients. Here's our amazing team. Um, and I am actually gonna take a couple seconds to introduce them um, because they are fantastic. The, the value you get um, when you work with us is you have a whole team of consultants that are licensed here to help you. And uh, the reason why I think that's really special is because when I think about what we do um, in any other career, right? If you walk into a doctor's office, you have someone that is checking you in someone that's processing your medical building, billing, someone that is taking your blood, a nurse practitioner that's often weighing you and getting your vitals, a doctor that's doing the consultation with you, and then sometimes even a specialist that they're referring you to um, if you have additional needs. And that's really when we set out to create our team, that was the mindset of the lens that we looked at. Because when you look at, and we'll walk through this tonight, all the things that the real estate agent has to do to really help facilitate an amazing experience for a client. It's just like your doctor's office. They aren't great at everything, but they are exceptional at a few very key things. And so what we strategically do when we hire our team members is we look for what are you exceptional at? And can we help you do that the majority of the time so that you are fulfilled and you're giving an amazing experience to the client? So up in the top corner, you've got Barbara Van Poole, who is the founder of our team. She also happens to be my mom. Um, she started the business in September, actually on her birthday, September 11th, 2001. And the reason why I say that is, um, if any of you remember September 11th, 2001, um, that was a pretty tumultuous time of uncertainty. And that was the day our company was founded. Um, and so when you think about that, it's really, um, interesting to think that our team has even in its first day of inception, we've been dealing with uncertainty and unusual times since then. Um, you have myself, you have our two head operations crew, you have Kristen LaForce and Erica Smith, who are both licensed real estate agents as well and help make sure everything runs smoothly on the back end. You have Marie Hoke, who um, has been with us 18 years, and she's not only a real estate coach to uh, dozens of real estate agents all around the country. She also serves um, our clients and does an amazing job. You have Stephanie Sharp, who's a former business banker and also works with clients. Tony Kennard, uh, who comes from a responsive marketing background and is incredible with optimizing our clients with marketing and helping them find homes not on the market and also helping them sell their homes. Gwen Harkerpool uh, comes from a third generation real estate dynasty that's here with us. Sabra Dufren helps us on the buy side and also helps onboard and train new agents. Caitlin Davison comes from um, 
actually working with Keller Williams International first, then being a real estate investor and broker. And we have had the fortune um, of getting to work with her for quite some time. Randy Abshir comes from owning his own business and working in the commercial world for a long time. And uh, he's an incredible entrepreneur and helps our clients. Our financial manager, Lisa O'Borney, who's been with us 25 years, John McLaughlin, Amber Northcutt, Michael Fix, Adrian, and my, Mariah. So we've got an amazing team here that are ready to help you. And I think it's just important to understand that um, we really, really, really want to help make sure you have an amazing experience. When you look at the roles of our team, we're a little different. We do have those specializations. And so that's something that's really awesome that we get to do is you get access to all these amazing roles. And what a lot of people don't know when they work with somebody on the buy side of real estate is um, I would say 99% of the time, the seller actually pays for the buyer side um, real estate agent. And in Texas, what a lot of people don't know is that um, up until several years ago, if you were working with a real estate agent, they were supposed to represent the seller. Well, what's interesting about that is um, something called dual agency started happening um, back in the 80s. And that was that the Real Estate Commission decided, you know what, realtors should be able to represent the buyer, the seller, or both. And if they represent both, of course, confidentiality is really important. We believe that you should always have one person representing your best interest because that's what allows them to negotiate better on your behalf and protect you. And so um, in the state of Texas, if a buyer has not hired a real estate agent and signed a loyalty agreement with them, they actually are supposed to represent the seller as a real estate agent. So you want to make sure you have representation and understand that the vast majority of the time that actually costs you nothing have representation and, and a professional really working on your behalf to give you an amazing experience. Now, what to expect when you're working with us. The first thing we wanna make sure we're doing is getting the best home for you at the best possible price. The second thing we wanna do is make sure you have local expert advice. We're going to give you outstanding service and um, we want to make sure that we have touch points throughout the process to make sure that you are thrilled with the experience and that we are minimizing the surprises that occur as much as possible, even in the middle of a pandemic. And we want to help save you time, right? Time is money and we understand that your time is very valuable. So we want to make sure that we are maximizing your time and really helping you to take advantage of all of the resources that we have available to you. What can a real estate agent help you with? These are the things that we help our clients with. Existing homes, right? That's what everybody thinks of first. Existing homes that are on the market, right? At any price point. But we can also help you with new construction and even building custom homes. Um, it's not that well known, but actually builders have and um, the real estate commissions are out of a totally separate budget. And we often know where the hidden budgets are with each builder or someone has more in flooring that they give out or another one might give you more off the lot or somebody else might give you more of a discount and um, in insurance or upgrades or a better roof or a pool. So we typically know where all of those little nuances are that each builder has where we can maximize your negotiation position. We can help you with townhomes, condos, high rises, um, homes bought through relocation companies, we work with on the buy and the sell side if somebody's relocating. We work with farm and, uh, farms, land, branch, horse properties, uh, lake houses, we've dealt with all of those. Um, we also work with for sale by owners and homes not yet on the market. For sale by owners are interesting because a lot of the time they may, like, they may think they don't want representation, but they're actually very appreciative to work with an honest, hardworking real estate agent that's bird dogging properties for their proper, their own buyer. So they're often willing to work with us and even pay the buyer side commission. Um, but what's really neat too is um, we, with Vanful Properties, we are part of the largest real estate brokerage in all of North Texas. And it's under an umbrella called Go Management with Keller Williams. And we have 4,100 real estate agents with that. And the reason why I tell you that that's important is because on May 1st, there was a change with the National Association of Realtors. And the change was that if you have a home that's coming on the market, you cannot pre-market that property without putting it in the MLS within 24 hours of you telling anyone in the public that could be you like somebody as the seller's next door neighbor. That could be a real estate agent outside of our brokerage. But the one exception is that if that agent is within our brokerage, we can tell anyone within our brokerage. So all of the sudden, being part of a brokerage that has 4,100 real estate agents instead of 10, 
is a real advantage when we're looking for our buyers for properties that are not on the market because we're not just leveraging ourselves. We're leveraging a huge network across all of North Texas and New Mexico to help find properties. Um, we have worked with um, foreclosures and short sales for a very long time. We actually even built up a national network of um, short sale agents around the country in the last downturn. We uh, can help with investment properties and rentals. We personally and several of our team members own investment properties. So we're very familiar with that. And also multifamily and rehab properties if you're interested in flipping or being a builder yourself. We've launched several builders. One of the things that I love about what we get to do is wherever you go, we get to go too. And so if you are not in North Texas and let's say you're in Chicago, or I know we have some people that are out of state considering their move to Texas even here tonight, um, wherever you go, we can help you find the right real estate consultant for you. We have helped people buy in China, in Asia, in Europe, in um, parts of Africa. We have helped in South America, in Mexico, in Canada. We've helped in all of the 50 United States and Puerto Rico. So wherever you go, we can help make sure you have the right representation wherever it is you are. So don't hesitate to let us know if that's something we can assist you with. And we'll interview that real estate agent, make sure they're a top performer and give excellent service. Let's start walking through our proven home buying process. Now, as you can imagine, um, when all of the pandemic started, uh, real estate agents and real estate services were not considered essential. And so it was really important that we actually took how the real estate process works and we flipped it upside down and had to help make sure that we were really paying attention to our clients and helping them accomplish their goals, even if we couldn't physically get into a property first. So what I'm gonna do is walk you through an updated um, home buying process as to what's going on right now in today's real estate market. And I think that that would be really helpful. Now let's take a look and we'll go through this together. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sit down and have a personalized consultation. We can do that on the phone, we can do that via Zoom, we can do it via Facebook or FaceTime or even um, an in-person meeting if that's something you're comfortable with. And we're gonna go over your specific criteria, we're gonna give you live access into the MLS and we're gonna have our incredible buyer team actually sitting down with you and going over your priorities of what you're looking for in the, in the next property that you buy. And they're gonna have, we actually have a list of questions and criteria that we're gonna go over here that we'll show you in a little bit. The second thing we're gonna do is go over the market breakdown and I'm actually gonna give you some real live numbers of what's happening here in our market right now. Then we're going to make sure that either you're working with a lender you've already worked with in the past that you know, like, and trust, or we always have at all times three amazing lenders on our preferred vendor list that we have done hundreds of real estate deals with that we trust to make sure they're giving you exceptional service. And, you know, I really think a lender can make or break a deal right now. We have seen more of the big banks break deals and cost buyers thousands of dollars um, than we've seen in quite some time. So that's something for you to keep in mind. Um, then we're going to use our tech savvy and safe home search. And we're going to walk you through exactly what that looks like because um, the way real estate is being shown and sold right now is very different than it was in the beginning of 2020 or the end of 2019. Then from there, once we've identified the right property, right, we're going to review all of the information. We actually happen to be excellent real estate stalkers. Um, I, I'm sure you can imagine that, but we go hunting for everything that we can find that puts you at a competitive advantage. We go looking for um, how much did the home sell before when the sell, you know, the now seller purchased the property? Do they have any loans that they took out recently on it? We can find past mortgage history. Um, we can also find out uh, motivation. We'll ask the other agent, you know, is there anything special about their motivation or timing that we need to be aware of? And if you're in multiple offer situations, which is something we really specialize in on the buyer and the seller side, we'll show you in, in tonight's um, a workshop, but there are a lot of things that we really pay attention to to make sure that we are putting your best foot forward when it comes to this. Now, in offer negotiation, we're going to negotiate together and we're then going to come to an agreement and we'll walk you through some of those terms that we look at. More importantly, we're going to prep you when our two, we have two agents that are working on every single buyer right now. And we'll tell you why that's important in just a second. 
but our agents are really going to make sure that we're negotiating to a positive experience and then we're going to help you get your home inspection scheduled uh, help you find your insurance the lender's going to order the appraisal we're going to help with um, getting your home warranty set up and a home warranty if you haven't bought in texas in quite some time it's kind of like an insurance property or an insurance policy but it's on the major mechanical items of your home for the first year that you own it so it could include um helping to cover if your uh, air conditioner goes out the day after closing, which in Texas in the summer, we've had happen quite a bit where the seller moves out and gosh darn it, that um, AC breaks the day the seller moves out of the house. And oftentimes it's not because the seller was shady or, or trying to hide something, but it is um, that, you know, we're in Texas and it's hot and those air conditioners get used quite a bit. So we'll work on that. And I'm going to move myself here for just a second in the room. It is. The sun is super bright in here. Let's try that. There we go. That's a little better. Um, then from there, we're also going to help you prepare for closing. And, you know, this list may look small to you with 10 steps. But the, the funny part is just the second slide, there's actually 120 steps that our, eight, that our real estate team, our professional administrative team does behind the scenes to make sure that you don't have to stress about those things and you can focus on packing and moving and picking out what you want in your home instead of having to worry about all of those details. And one thing, I'm gonna go back one slide for a second. When, they sit, when we sit down with you at your buyer consultation and if you're interested in scheduling one of those at any point in time, you're welcome to send us a note and we can go ahead and get one on the books for you. So feel free at any point in time to put in the Q&A and that will ping me personally and we can get that scheduled for you. But um, we have two full-time real estate agents dedicated um, on the buyer side at all times because of the way our market is right now um, to make sure that we're helping to meet and exceed your needs. Now, let's talk about the market, right? We're talking about how the real estate market is. There's two different types of markets that we're fluctuating in between at all times. And that is a buyer and a seller's market. A buyer's market, as you can see down below, we have more houses on the market than we actually have buyers. So what you're seeing is, is you have more inventory, more options for a buyer to choose from and fewer buyers. Well, what would you think would happen if that were the case? If a buyer has more to choose from, do you think home prices are going to be going up? Or do you think they're going to be going down? Oftentimes, when you're in a buyer's market, because the buyers have more options, sellers have to be more competitive and more creative to attract the right buyer to purchase their property. And oftentimes, that starts with pricing, location, and condition. But there's a lot of other creative things that we can do, too, to help draw a buyer in because they have more to choose from. Now, we have a seller's market on the other side of the spectrum. And a seller's market is when we have fewer homes on the market and we have more buyers looking for properties. And oftentimes the reverse happens. We have to get really creative with how we market our buyers to the seller. And we'll actually, we have um, a specific couple of notes for you here of things that we're doing today in the market to help with that. Now what I find fascinating is at any given time, different price points in a real estate market can be in different markets. So I will tell you right now, we have, Parts of our market are in a buyer's market. Parts of our market here in North Texas are actually in a seller's market. So we'll walk you through that and share with you what that is. When we're determining value, right? What actually determines value? And we hear this a lot from clients. The first thing that we hear is, um, you know, what, what a buyer wants a home to be worth, right? And when we're determining that, right? A home is not worth what your friend paid for their house down the street. It's not worth what your family paid for their home in 2009. It's not worth what Zillow says it's worth or what you want. It's not worth what the tax records say it's worth or honestly what you hope the sellers will take, right? Now, factors that actually do impact the true value of a property are some of these items. What a buyer is actually willing to pay for a property. And in some of the markets that might be in seller's market, it's also what the competing buyers are willing to pay for a property. It's what today's market will bear it's what today's competition is selling for to make sure that we're measuring up against the competition. It's what today's financing allows. And I'll give you an example of that um, for jumbo loans. Jumbo loans are um, in Texas, property or loan amounts that are over about the $517,000, $520,000 mark. And on a jumbo loan, um, we had about a month and a half ago, all of a sudden we had a ton of options out there available. You could go get a jumbo loan over 500,000 with 
Wells Fargo, Prime Lending, Keller Mortgage, JP Morgan, Chase, City, Wells, B of A, I mean, all of them had the options available. And what happened was, is that the secondary market, which are the people that buy um, all of the loans from those guys, they have lines of credit that they extend. And if you've ever watched the movie, The Big Short, this will kind of resonate with you a little bit. Um, and what happened was there were three main warehouse secondary lenders that were giving money out there for jumbo loans and all but one of them pulled their credit lines. And so all of a sudden we went from having this huge amount of jumbo loans out there available to only a few lenders that were willing to give money on jumbo loans. So all of a sudden that meant that if somebody was in a higher price point, there went from, you know, let's say 30 potential buyers on any given property down to maybe 10 buyers on a property. Well, if that happened for a very short period of time, that changed our pricing for those properties and the opportunity that we had. Because we have a pulse on the market, we were able to see that that was a short-term problem, but we did see other agents recommending that their clients fire sale their properties, um, which maybe put them in a negative position because their agents weren't watching the market. So it's really important you understand what financing is going on and have a consultant or a team of consultants, right, helping you understand and navigate the market. Today's economy is really important, and we actually watch the um, job market very closely because oftentimes the job market leads the real estate market by six months. So if we see like North Texas, even despite COVID, has a ton of new jobs that are coming here. We are one of still the fastest growing cities in the country, and we have more major companies moving to North Texas than we do almost in any other major metro area that helps us have a little bit more stability in our market, say, than other areas that might have people fleeing those cities. Um, buyer's perception of location and the actual home's location makes a big difference in price, and also the time it takes to sell in your neighborhood. Now, one thing that's really interesting is, let's take a look at what's actually happening here in the real estate market. So if we take a look at North Texas, there's two key numbers that we are watching just on a regular basis. I mean, almost minute by minute here. Um, and that is, these are two numbers that are not reported on as much in um, the media. And let me tell you why. The two numbers the media watches more than anything else are usually active homes on the market and homes that have sold. And the reason why is because there's a company called the Case Schiller Index that reports on those two figures across all the major metro areas every month and every quarter. And oftentimes the media outlets will subscribe to the quarterly reports of how many homes are on the market and how many homes are sold. Well, the, the interesting part about that though is if you're in the middle of change, Learning about what happened to a property 30 or 90 days ago when it sold really doesn't tell me what's happening in today's market. And so five years ago, um, Erica and Romeo on our team got really smart and decided to start tracking these numbers on a weekly basis, which were the, we also track the active and the solds, but more importantly, we track the number of homes each week that go under contract because once that occurs the next week, I can't go back and retroactively pull it. And they also started tracking the number of new homes hitting the market, meaning new listings, not necessarily just new build homes. Um, and so as some of those metrics, these actually have been a real saving grace for us to really have, um, I can't promise you we have a perfect crystal ball, but I will tell you, we have been, I mean, almost a percent off with accuracy uh, compared to a lot of the other outlets because we've been able to watch these numbers so closely and because we had the foresight to start tracking these five years ago to really see where our market is. So let's interpret that for you. So your red line here is the number of homes you've had go under contract and you can see for the first part of this year. And then the gray line is actually 2019's numbers of homes that went under contract the same week, same time of year. So what happened, right? Mid-March, we had shelter in place occur. And what you can see is that we had a 24% drop in the number of contracts so that we see that 24% drop occurred um, and the number of contracts went down. Part of that was buyers physically couldn't get into homes across North Texas. And part of that was um, we had a lot of people scared they were losing their jobs or were uncertain about um, COVID in the future. Then what happened, right? We had real estate became essential again, and then we had shelter in place start to go away as of May 1st. And I want you to see the buyer confidence just skyrocket after that. We went from being at a 24% dip up over 50% overnight in a matter of two weeks 
to being at 121% of where we were in May of 2019. And I think a couple factors occurred with that. I think, you know, the first thing you think about is um, if you are sheltered in place in your home and maybe you're not used to being home, working from home all day, every day, you're probably looking around going, you know, I liked this home, but I haven't, I, I don't love this house. Or you know what? If we're going to stay um, at home more and travel less for the next year or two, I want a pool or I want more land or you know what? I actually want more walkability or you know what? I've never really liked my neighbors. Maybe I would like to be sheltered in place with neighbors that I like, right? It, we have all sorts. I want a third car garage so my car can fit in the garage. I want less space because I want less to clean and maintain, right? Everybody has a different reason, but I will tell you that in addition to relocation, in our normal spring market, we had a lot of people that were sheltered in place in their house that just decided, you know what, I'm starting to get really clear on motivation, my priorities are changing, and I'm changing what I want. Um, Thomas asked us on a mortgage rate, where can you find that so you can track them? Bankrate.com is a great website to be able to track that, um, and is an easy one to be able to go and look, but Bankrate is the name of the website, and you can go track mortgage rates. Um, I'll tell you, it is hour by hour right now. We have some buyers locking in the low twos and mid threes. And a couple of months ago, we saw it in the high threes and low fours. So it just depends. It's, it's literally fluctuating hour by hour um, as far as what the Fed and what the banks are lending at right now. Um, but I also want you to realize that this shows that buyers are showing real confidence in the real estate market here in North Texas and are willing to make decisions. What that under contract number shows me is there is a high motivation to make decisions especially with interest rates as low as they are, um, it's making a huge difference in helping. You know, I mean, I, I've been in real estate now for 16 years. I've never seen interest rates this low. I've got to be honest with you. And in my career, I've never seen them this low. Um, and, you know, we don't know how long that's going to last, but I do think it for sure is helping uh, buyers with their uh, confidence in the real estate market. Now, in addition to that, Let's take a look at the new listings because this tells us what we're seeing moving forward, right? If we don't have homes coming back on the market, there's gonna be a dwindling supply of what's available. And so you can see here that typically March is a very strong month for the real estate market. Spring break for Texas happens in March. People start looking for homes as if they're gonna move in the summer for kids in school. They start taking a look at that. So March is a big month usually for homes to go on the market. And we actually were running 27% behind after shelter in place occurred. Everybody again, just kind of put the brakes on. Well, we then saw that dip right until about mid April. And then we saw the confidence start to tick up with sellers. Um, and we're going to talk through some things that you can utilize to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward when you're viewing a home. But, you know, you have to think a lot of a lot of sellers, if they're immunocompromised or maybe they're feeling sensitive about what's going on, they might be more nervous about allowing somebody into their house. So for a seller to make a decision to allow not just one person, but maybe multiple people into their home over a series of weeks, um, that can be a really stressful decision for a seller and I think has caused some people to pause more than they normally would. What is great, though, is we're seeing... Again, those inventory numbers tick up, which is a really positive sign of what we're to see for spring and summer market. I will tell you there's a shortage of homes that is starting to occur at 500,000 and under. So if you're considering buying a home and you're under $500,000, I would encourage you to look now. We're not seeing that supply exponentially getting bigger over the next one, three, and six months. So I would encourage you if you're looking under 500,000 um, to be out now looking um, and seriously looking because that's making a huge difference for our clients. The ones that are committing and moving sooner um, are getting better deals than the homes that are selling further and further and further as we're going because prices are going up and multiple offers are bidding those properties up. So sooner is better than later in the summer if you're considering purchasing under 500. And that 500 to $750,000 range, we're in a little bit more of a balanced market. If the property is priced well, it's still in a multiple offer situation and we will talk with you about some of the things that you can do to work through that. And then if you're in a luxury market, we actually are in a slight sh uh, surplus right now. And so, and I apologize you guys, we're dealing with the sun as we go, so I'm following it with me. Um, so on um, the 500, or sorry, the 750 and up, so moving into our luxury market of a million, million and a half, two and three million, that definitely is moving more into a buyer's market with more surplus than we have um, 
uh, buyers. And so with that, I do think the shrinking of the jumbo lending made a big difference. Um, but there is more negotiation room on those. They're going to ask you. I think these are good if you're, if you're watching tonight for you to write some of these things down um, so that you can have the uh, list of criteria maybe thought through before you're sitting down with us. We'll be happy to send this to you too with a recording if you're on with us today. Um, so some of the things we want to talk through when we In whatever state you're coming from and Texas like a great example is in New Jersey and in Chicago the washer and dryer and refrigerator often stay with the house in those states in Texas the washer dryer and refrigerator are expected to go um, in other states certain closing costs are paid for by the seller certain are paid for by the buyer we just want to make sure we're putting you with your right foot forward of understanding any of the nuances so you don't have any surprises up with a professional lender that can perform. That is so important. And we're gonna talk about how much of a down payment do you think you need to put down? There are so many different loan options available out there that let's talk through, is FHA a good option for you, which is three and a half percent down? Is, are you a veteran? Because there's 100% um, financing options, which are great. We actually have a, an amazing, paid so literally they would have hardly any money out getting into their first home um, are you looking at um, jumbo loans are you looking at 5 10 20 30 percent down what's going to put your best foot forward and is it better to have a, an arm right your loan in your mortgage or a 30-year mortgage um, so we're going to talk about that and and really one of the most important things that we want to know is the worst thing we can do to you is not have this conversation up front take you out to see homes that you think you want to buy and then all of a sudden you realize in Texas, because our property taxes may be a little bit higher than other states because we don't have income tax, that maybe that lower your budget or your shopping by $100,000 or $50,000, I will tell you there is a big difference when you start going down in price over the quality that you're going to get. And everything starts to look really sad when you've been tempted with something a lot better. I, I say that to say we don't, we don't want to tease you and we don't want to be unfair with it. Um, is it uh, important to um, take a look at location to school, to work? What are those things that are important to you? On lifestyle, um, what do I like in my house? Is a pool important? Um, is walkability important, right? Do I need to, do I want to walk my kids to school? Or by looking for? Um, and we have an anonymous attendee also asking, how much realistically can I expect to negotiate down? You know, it's interesting. It really depends on the location and the price point and the motivation. In the last week, I have seen everything from uh, homes getting offers 50 and 75,000 above asking price. And then off a builder that we negotiated with 60,000 off. Another one with um, 30,000 over list. So I would, it's less about how much you're gonna negotiate off and it's a lot more about the desirability of that property and how that property is priced. Because you could take the same home and you know price one home that is slow. Seller could price his home at five hundred thousand dollars. Well, if you if you had the choice of paying three hundred and twenty or five hundred thousand dollars for the same house, what are you going to do? You're probably going to make an offer on the three hundred and twenty thousand dollar home. Odds are that other buyers are probably going to agree with you as well which means that that property is going to be bid up probably closer to the 375, 300 home above um, 
you know, you're getting that home below market value versus if you got the $500,000 home and you negotiated $80,000 off the price, you're still getting this one at 420,000 and you're getting this one at 380,000. So it's really all about how the property is priced. I'd ask, does a pool add a value to um, a home? You know, a pool is really a lifestyle decision. Some people absolutely love pools and some people don't. So it's really a lifestyle decision. If you're thinking of putting in a pool, I think the most important thing for you to consider is it's far better to buy a home. In concrete, concrete has tripled in the last three years. So if you think about it, that's all you're using when you're putting in a pool is all that gunite concrete. So the cost of putting in a pool went from, you know, you could at least get a hole in the ground for thirty dollars to $40,000 to now a base pool price is seventy dollars to $80,000. So buy a home with a pool would be my... advice if neighborhood you want a front entry or back different communities have different things past experiences right what do I like about where I live now or have lived in the past or what do I not and also what great experiences or negative experiences have you had in real estate that we can make sure that we're avoiding for this time and then what deal breakers do you have everybody has one or two so it's We actually already had a leg up because we deal with so many clients relocating here to the Metroplex. Um, and we deal with a lot of investors as well and really busy executives and doctors that honestly work all the time and didn't have a lot of free time. We started innovating five, six years ago with offering our home buyers the option that if they don't want or the client themselves instead. That's the beauty of having two full-time team members working to help you find a property um, because we can get out there and do that where most real estate agents can't. Um, and so we would actually go and film the property or FaceTime the property or take a video and send it to them or even set up a Zoom and walk the property with them and they can ask live questions while we're walking it. And 25% of our home buyers actually put homes under contract without first being able to see the home. Then what they did is once they secured the home, they had a nominal um, option period or inspection fee is what we call it, um, where, that they would pay for the seller, one to two, three hundred dollars. And uh, then they would put their earnest money up, but that didn't come into risk until after they'd seen the home and decided if they wanted to inspect it. And you know, if you think about about it um, and you're missing out on properties because they're going so fast and your work schedule won't allow you to adjust well this might be actually a great option and you know what it may cost you three to five hundred dollars but how much time is that saving you how many hours of driving and hoping and wishing and then missing out is that saving you if instead be in first position so that's something that's available if you would like it and when honestly shelter in place happened it was fantastic for us because we already had a model and a system and a process around that that made the home buying and viewing option a lot safer for our clients because they weren't having to go into as many properties now the buck and really make sure that we are pushing to find the best property. Now, when all the websites around there, you're able to thumb through your phone or your computer or your um, tablet, you're able to look through 20, 30, 50, 100 houses online. What our job really is to do is to take all the information you're giving us to find the best located, best priced properties in the area that you're wanting to be in and really help narrow it down. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, if if we're looking at seven properties with a client and we haven't found a really great property, and you know, you have to understand that a 10 is never going to be the absolute perfect property, but a 10 should meet the four to six things that you said are the most important things to you, right? That's a 10. Um, if we're looking at three to seven properties and not finding a nine or a 10 for you, um, on a scale, right, of a one to 10 rating, then we're either looking at the wrong criteria, we're looking at the wrong or 
through 30 or 50 properties. We want to really help you take that online offline and help you really look at the best properties that are possibly available. And uh, you know, it's funny. We, we tell our clients this all the time, but really don't be surprised if we're able to hone in really well and you find your perfect home on that first trip out because we know how to listen and we know how to help hone it in. And then we're actually going to give you direct access to the MLS. So that's something that's really nice. You can see everything that we we can see. Now, when we're showing, this is something that's really important for you to pay attention to if you're looking at buying in the next six to nine months. What I really want you to pay attention to is sellers have video cameras, they have ring doorbells, and they have audio equipment in their homes. And now in Texas, they're not supposed to be recording, but if somebody has a baby monitor up already and they happen to be able to see what's going on, I will absolutely tell you that there are people that are listening to what you're saying and what you're doing in a house. So showing etiquette has become paramount <laughs> in, in this environment. So when you're viewing a home, it's really important to follow proper safety precautions. And while you may personally not feel wear um, a mask or gloves or covering um, on a normal basis, I will tell you in walking through homes, because we don't know about the Im uh, immunity of a, another person or another client, it's imperative that you wear a mask, and we actually have some really cute branded Vample Properties masks that you are welcome to. Look at that. Check those out. Super fun. So we have your masks. And um, also, I want you to know that you have been caught with coffee breath with a mask. We also have mints for you just in case you need that. But we've got you covered. But wearing a mask is important. Also, sometimes even bringing like gardening gloves or gloves with you can be important. Not touching surfaces is important. A lot of people, amazingly enough, have cameras hidden in bookshelves. And if you're touching counters or touching a lot of doorknobs and things like that, um, it makes clients nervous. Um, it really does. And so it's really important to pay attention to that. And if you're able to have hand sanitizer or shoe covers with you as well, that's something I think is an added benefit too. Not necessary, but super helpful. And then um, if the seller requests it, we have had sellers ask clients to remove shoes. Um, and I mean, I'll tell you even, we had a, a, a Amber on our team was awesome and, and shared this with me. She was out showing this weekend. They wore masks in the home, walked outside, and one of the buyers took off the mask um, to be able to have a conversation outside at, you know, at a distance. And it freaked the seller out because they could see the buyer without a mask outside of their home on their ring doorbell and actually called Amber and asked her about it. And the client had worn the mask in the house, but because they didn't have cameras inside, they could only see the ring doorbell outside. That was a concern. Really important. And then obviously, you know, honoring the six foot rule and washing your hands and just having normal hygiene etiquette right now is of course important, but we all know we do that anyways, so that's not a big deal. <laughs> now, when you're writing your offer, these are some really important things that the seller is looking at. Understand that they are listening, they're watching what you do, and that actually makes a difference if they see that you're really courteous in their home or you're saying nice things about them in their home. They can hear that, they know that, and so um, that does make a difference on your negotiating position. And I'll tell you, I've, I've even had a seller that, or a buyer one time that I was in a home with that was saying really negative things about the, the buyer's taste. I um, did not agree with what she was saying and I, I kept trying to get her to kind of pipe it down but she was a very vocal buyer and, and hey you're allowed to have your own opinion if you don't like their their taste and style that's great but she kept talking about it and it offended the, the seller so much when they could hear it that they actually rejected her offer which was the highest offer because she had offended them so just you know be aware people are listening um so here are some of the things outside of some of the etiquette we talked about in the property that are important when you're writing your offer so and each of our buyer team are specialists in understanding how to position you and market you to the seller to put your best foot forward and honestly to build the relationship with the other agent because it's as much as of a sales job right now with the buyer as it is the physical offer that's coming in. Now, some of the things you want to pay attention to are the price of the home, obviously, that you're putting in and the down payment. Oftentimes, the buyer that writes the first offer, even though a multiple offer situation may make you have to bid it up. They often get the benefit of the doubt if you're willing to be the first one in because you have more time to build rapport with the other side. And also you were the one willing to take the leap first. So 
oftentimes if you're willing to get your offer in first, it doesn't guarantee you're going to get what you want, but it does really help when it comes to your negotiation position. The type of financing you're doing, um, there's title policy and title company, which is really important in the home warranty. Um, closing and possession dates are really important and we can, we can help you craft this, right? This is, this is easy for us to help you craft. Um, the earnest money, the exclusions, which are exclusions are something that the seller wants to take with them. That may not be as important to you. Sometimes it's special drapes in a room. Sometimes it's uh, the ceiling fans, right? It could be something very simple, but may have sentimental value for them. Um, the amount of repairs we ask for, the homeowners association fees, special provisions. Oftentimes there are special little nuances that we know how to, how to move the needle on and write a really clean offer, but make a couple of things that are a show of really good faith um, to that seller. Now, when we're writing our offer and we're in a multiple offer situation, um, which is not uncommon in summer in general, but particularly now, um, there's a few things that we can do that are really help stand out. One of the things that's really important is marketing you. And so if we notice things that are in a seller's home, maybe they love Alabama football. Maybe they have a nonprofit that's really um, personal to them, or maybe they love to travel and you're an avid traveler. If there's anything of connection that we can make to help tie a bow around the marketing of you to the seller, we want to do that. And we often encourage you to write a letter about you, what you like about the home and appreciate about it, and include either a video or a couple photos to help us cement visually, right? We're, a lot of people are visual learners first. So to help visually cement you and how great you are and why they want to work with you. A few other things we can do, and this is something that we would go over um, when we're consulting with you to write an offer, are waiving an appraisal. Um, so maybe if a home comes in a uh, slightly under appraised value with the lender that you'd be okay putting a little bit of additional money down. Um, double earnest money is the money that you put with a third party company, the title company. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I am serious about buying a home. I'm so serious that I'm willing to put one, two, or 3% of the sales price with that third party company, the title company. Um, and it can stay there and go as part of my down payment at closing and funding. But if something should happen and I were to not close on the home after all of my other contingencies are waived, so after my inspection, after my loan time, after the appraisal's done, if something else were to occur and I could not purchase the property, I would beg you to take that money instead of coming to sue me to perform on the home. So putting double or triple earnest money down, if you're really serious and you know that you aren't going to have any issues, might be an opportunity there. Paying for title policy, which is typically a seller expense, and also um, researching the seller, right? What appeals to them? Now, once you have what we call agreed and executed on a home, executed means everybody is signed off. We have a whole huge list of vendors that we have that can assist you um, in making sure that this is indeed the right property. In Texas, a typical inspection period is anywhere on the short end, um, five days, and on the longer end, 10 days to get your inspections done. Um, if you're writing a cleaner offer, oftentimes we're looking at about a five to seven day window right now for inspection periods. And that's where we're gonna go in and inspect the home. The inspector's gonna spend three to four hours in your property and do termite or pool and all these other things. Um, and we're also gonna have an insurance company run a clue report at the same time. And they're gonna go digging for anything um, that might have come up as a, an insurance claim on the property over the last five years. So was there, um, a roof that the money was paid out on, but the roof never got replaced, right? The inspection report shows that the roof didn't get replaced. Or was there a flood, um, a water claim inside of the home and it wasn't disclosed? Oftentimes, I, I really don't think people are shady, but I, I do think sometimes something happens like that, life gets busy, you get it fixed, you forget about it and the seller moves on. And so it's important for us to be able to get that information. It's not something most real estate agents do. It's really important that we get that information and we're able to questions um, from all sides of the beach ball, right? We're able to look at it from the inspector side, from the fact finding side of the clue report, and then also what the seller has given us on the seller's disclosure. Now, a couple of the other things that are gonna occur during this period is your lender, if you're getting a loan, is going to order a home appraisal. And then um, also we have a complimentary uh, utility concierge that's gonna help you make sure you get all of your utilities set up so you don't have to spend tons and tons of time um, sitting on hold with all of the utility companies. 
Now, this is something that we can um, give you um, when we send this out, but this is the no-no list. So I, I want you to take a look at this. Basically, don't do anything that your lender tells you not to do. So if a lender tells you don't buy a new car, don't make any major expenditures, don't take out any credit cards, um, right? Like don't, don't move money around, don't pay off a lot of debt, right? Once you start the loan process, essentially you tread very gingerly. And I always tease, um, one of our preferred lenders is Mark Raskin with Prime Lending. I've worked with him, we've worked with him for a really long time, but I always tease him when we're under contract purchasing another property, I always tease him and I'm like, okay, Dad, I'm calling you before I do anything because I don't, I don't want to mess up the loan process. So any major purchase you're considering, call him first. Um, and uh, Stephanie on our team brought up a really good idea today, which was oftentimes it's something you don't think about, like you're trading in your car, but it's a lower monthly payment, but it's still a new debt. Or you're standing in Home Depot or Nebraska Furniture Mart or Crate and Barrel and you're looking at furniture or new appliances for the home and you're thinking this is a purchase I'm going to make that will go into our property. But the problem with that is, is that um, it actually is new debt, which can um, impact your credit score. It can also impact everything else. So just if your lender says to do anything, you just say uh, yes <laughs> and you get it done and don't do anything that uh, they don't tell you to do. Now, we love what we do, we're passionate about it, and if there is, um, uh, there's any of you out there that are thinking, gosh, I'd really love a personalized consultation um, with this crew about home buying or um, learning more about my personal situation so we can start keeping an eye out for you, please go ahead and uh, drop us a note, and we'll be happy to get with you on that. And um, this is from Heather DeRojas, one of our past clients, but I think it sums it up beautifully which is um, the team at Vanpool Properties was great. They found us the home on the very first day we went looking and they were very picky. They had a lot of things that were really important to them, um, which means they listened to what our needs and wants were. They've helped us in many ways and recommended contractors, lenders, painters, and more. Plus they really helped educate us in the process, which for us, education is really important. We want to make sure that you are an educated home buyer and you're making the best decision for you. So with that, I want to be respectful of your time. We have about three or four minutes where we can make sure that we are answering any questions that you all might have. I think we've got a couple others in the chat that I haven't gotten to yet. And I'm going to put our contact information up here on the screen so that if you want to reach out to us, um, we would love to have you do that and uh, schedule a personal consultation for you. And I hope that this has been helpful for you. Um, a couple of questions that I have. One is, are you expecting prices to drop anytime soon? It's a great question. Um, you know, I, I don't have a crystal ball, but what I'm seeing right now is we have pent up buyer demand, particularly in the market of 750 and under. We have pent up buyer demand. I don't see prices going down anytime soon. I will tell you um, the country right now is on average 4% higher and list price right now than it was this same time last year. Texas coming into the end of May was actually running 1% behind um, last year's listing numbers coming into summer. And so what, what I will tell you with that is, is basically we're starting already 5% lower than we really would be if we were with everybody else in the country right now. So I think that's something to keep in mind too. Um, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch. I think if we have another large shelter in place, particularly the high end market is going to really get pummeled. Um, I hope that's not the case, but I, I do anticipate that that might happen. Um, but you know what? Only time will tell. So I think that's interesting. Um, we also have a buyer. Oh, it's a great question, Joan. Um, Joan's asking how to find the best properties for resale. That's great. Um, and their last home, they got stuck for a while because uh, they couldn't sell. Oh, that's fair. Um, so the best way to find homes is we give you direct access into the MLS, Joan. But the other part that um, I think is really important is that we're looking for um, properties that are coming soon. We actually can pull the tax records of an area that you're looking to buy in. We can then download the phone numbers of those neighbors and we'll personally pick up the phone and call and say, hey, we've got an amazing home buyer looking to move into your neighborhood. Would you be interested in selling your house? Or um, do you know of anybody in your neighborhood that might be willing to sell that meets this criteria? And amazingly enough, we usually have a couple dozen, a couple dozen clients a year that we help find a home that has never been on the market, didn't even think about going on the market because we're willing to take that extra step and proactively reach out 
and scour for properties, um, whether it's from other agents in our brokerage or whether it's from um, home sellers that maybe didn't even realize they were ready to sell yet. So I think that's something that's always fun too. Well, I really appreciate you all. We're gonna end one minute early and I just wanna let you know how much we appreciate you guys and your time today. And uh, as a side note, um, we actually are part of a uh, podcast for those of you that might be entrepreneurs or leaders um, in business or in your professional careers uh, called Empire Building. And uh, it's all about how to build a big business and an even bigger life. So if you haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend you do that. It's all about living a great life and building a big business at the same time and how to do that. Uh, we'd love to have you listen in and join us and you'll, you'll get to learn a little bit more about us too. Y'all enjoy, we appreciate you, and have a fantastic rest of the day.